Mary Margaret is my younger sister. She's the second youngest of seven. We call her Lucky. She is 20 years old. She is spunky, independent, and in charge. <laughs> we grew up in a small town in Mississippi. Um, we didn't baby her or treat her differently. Being one of seven, you just kind of fall right in and we would, you know, everything that we did, she would do. I mean, like we fought. She was my little sister. We like had fun together. We got in trouble together. I always say that like I didn't really realize my Margaret was different until like I was in middle school probably. I didn't really like understand or like even identify a difference in Mary Margaret. Looking back on our childhood, like Mary Margaret was always just like so caring. She has a servant's heart. She wants to bring joy to other people, you know. She's just the center of our universe. I didn't know the extent of her sickness and how bad it was. She told me she had pancreatic cancer and to not Google it. She decided not to do her second round of chemo whenever she was, it was right around Christmas, and she passed away in April. So, I mean, it was, it was quick. And that's when everything changed. Looking back, it was really bad. My parents passing on Mary Margaret was different from the way that my sisters and I might have grieved or gone through it. And I think as independent as Mary Margaret is and as much as she's her own person and is an adult, she understands that she needs someone to care for her. And so I think it was very scary for her to lose my parents because not only is it hard enough just to lose them, but I think she had questions of who's gonna take care of me. I knew she needed to be with us. I had no idea how we were gonna make it work, but I knew it had to work because that's what the situation called for. I was actually 21 whenever we decided that Mary Margaret was gonna be with us full time. I had just turned 23 when Mary Margaret came to live with us full time. At that point, I had transitioned from sister to caretaker. And all those things that just, they came all at once. I just felt like completely lost. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but it felt like we were drowning. The people in the community who, you know, supported our family, they knew that Mary Margaret was here full time. She wasn't in any kind of like program or anything. Um, they kept telling me, oh, you gotta go to Gigi's. And uh, that was really exciting to me. You know, we show up and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cool. <laughs> Because being from a small town in Mississippi, growing up, like we didn't have resources like this. So I was kind of blown away. Our goal is overall to change the way the world views Down syndrome. What we're doing in these four walls of our playhouse is extremely extraordinary for the family, um, but we're growing that family as well as growing the participant with Down syndrome in order to have the confidence and the skills to go out into the community and change the way that the community views them. We truly believe that Gigi's Playhouse is for the entire family. We are a Down Syndrome Achievement Center and we are obviously focused on the individual with Down Syndrome and their growth um, in multiple different skills. But we also are an open and welcoming place for those families, for their parents, for their siblings to be able to come and also gain services, whether that's just networking with somebody who gets it and who also understand some of those same struggles as well as those same achievements and how they're able to um, be able to network with one another and celebrate with one another. Gigi's was our first breakthrough in Nashville. I was co-parenting with Anna. We were, you know, I had Mary Margaret, we were both students. Like for a long time, it was easy to think that our situation is so niche that like, 
Nobody understands our struggle. And then I was introduced to all these families and these women who have children with Down syndrome. And I'm just like covered in love and just welcomed. And I was kind of like, okay, like we can do this. It's gonna be okay. There are things for her. I mean, it just opened up so many doors. She, she's good, like to, I went to hang out. Shanae, she did us do a lot of things that she, she us do CrossFit, looking on the beach. Mary Margaret just kind of blows me away. <laughs> she, um, just seeing how much she's been able to transition her life um, from the sudden move here to Nashville, um, as well as her sisters and their strength um, and their patience. Seeing them go from coming to Gigi's and it being the first thing that they've heard about in Nashville to meeting with some of our other moms that have um, children the same age or around the same age as Mary Margaret, and now seeing her in multiple programs in the Nashville area area as well as working at Edley's. Um, it's just something that she's truly grown in the last year and a half um, and it's been wonderful for us to be able to make those connections and see how it's truly impacted her life. Gigi's has just empowered Mary Margaret so much. Her level of confidence now like blows my mind. I feel good being independent. If they I get much, much, much better. I am so thankful for Gigi's because I feel like it's just broken so many barriers. The um, support, the love, the guidance, the resources that Gigi's is like able to offer. I, don't, I really don't know where we would be at this point without, without them. Through like the trauma and loss that we've all been through, um, it's just made us like so close. And instead of it becoming this like burden, it's become a joy. I think for for Chi Chi's community, it's really good. When you invest in Gigi's, you don't just invest in like this one building. You invest in the whole community. You invest in families. It just brings about a whole different sense of like how we value those around us. It's just so important to give to places like Gigi's.